Tina Shroom Peeps, uh, real quick video, but I just wanted to do it uh, before I forget because you know I forget a lot of stuff. Um, I, you know, I'm in the process of incubating some. I think they're golden uh, oyster mushrooms. Well, I have a previous batch that I had did on January 24th. So today is February the 6th, I believe. So that's been call it 13 days, almost two weeks. Golden oysters, just so you know, they generally um, incubate pretty fast, um, maybe even a little bit faster than the blues, it definitely faster than the blues. Um, but I was noticing that mine, they're just not, let me show you a bag. Some of them are better, but look at this one here. I mean, it's just like, you know, spots, which I guess that's another thing I should have, uh, you know, maybe do uh, well, well, I am doing a video, but <laughs> I should have thought to show, you know, maybe a week apart um, what the um, bags are supposed to look like. So when I first, um, when I did my first batch, I was not sure if like this situation, like <laughs> these kind of round, you know, just haphazard circles, I didn't know if that was mold um, or if that was mycelium, you know, or what. That is mycelium. It's not mold. That's how it looks until they start kind of you know, meshing together, meeting together, and, and really colonizing really well. Um, so, bottom line, two weeks, you know, into this incubation, you know, process of this batch, this isn't the batch that I, that I just did, this is a previous batch, it should be much further along. I'll show you another one from that same batch, and it's a lot more colonized. And again, it's not um, uncommon, necessarily, for it to be uneven, like that's totally normal, it's not like all of a sudden it's white all over at the same time um, but I would expect it to at least all the, the whole batch to at least look like that second one and maybe even be a little bit further on because I mean they should pretty much be done like within another five days or so so you know I looked and I, I knew it the whole time I just got busy whatever the reason why it's taken forever is because it's cold so I'm in here I'm freezing my butt off which is why I'm in a my ski coat <laughs> my little beanie um, I'm only going to be in here a couple minutes. My kids are out of school today, so I'm not getting you know, enough work done. I wanted to do a new batch today, do a, a new batch to mix, because uh, I need to get some more lion's mane. Lion's mane and golden oysters have been really popular with my chefs in addition to the blues. Um, you know, and, and again, I'm going to do another video on at least what's been working for me with chefs, which is going to be different from a farmer's market sometimes, um, but my stuff will be different from a restaurant in California or in Boston, you know, or out in Texas or St. Louis or whatever. Um, but that's what's working for me. So I'll do another video in terms of um, what some people grow specifically for restaurants. Anyway, so um, I know I'm talking about a lot, but some of these things are reasons why, number one, I buy blocks um, from TR at Earth Angel Mushrooms. Um, and, and that's because, uh, you know, I, there's always something that comes up and I can't do my own batches with as much uh, regularity as I want. So I'll buy blocks from him to supplement. Or let's say I might do all goldens myself um, and then buy blues and kings and shiitake or whatever it is from him. And that's another way that some people can do it if you want to mix you know, both worlds. Um, do something yourself that you, know, you wouldn't necessarily want to buy blocks from, you know, from, another, um, from another person or, or just again, just to mix it up. So anyways, I'm all over the place. <laughs> this was supposed to be about colonization. Um, so the reason why these aren't colonizing so well is because it was really cold in the other room. I have four rooms, if you recall. I've got one room for my large grow, one room for my small grow. This right here is in the lab. And then I have an incubation room, which and I also have my desk and stuff in there. The incubation room has been too cold. I'm trying to kind of create little mini climates so one grow, the one that has my kings and like shiitake I had put in there before, um, th that's the coldest room that I have. I'm trying to keep it around 55 degrees. Number one, they, they like that. You know, between that 55, no more than 65, kings really like it. The colder, the better. Um, plus, I'm in the northeast, well, mid-Atlantic. It it's obviously helps my, my electric bill to not have to really heat that room. Um, similar to that is the, the room with the, the oysters. Uh, I have blue oyster lion's mane in there and then when these goals are ready they'll go in there and that I try to keep more like 60 um, 60 no more than 65 if I can help it again honestly more so for um, energy costs because um, they can go higher it's just uh, energy cost in the lab 
um, I have a room that is more closed off. So all three of those other rooms, the ceiling is connected because it's just like a gothic ceiling. There's no insulation in here, which really sucks. So, you know, the only way that I can kind of regulate those temperatures is by closing the doors and changing the thermostats. I have mini split system changing the thermostats in those specific rooms. So it's highly inefficient as to having, you know, versus having each room on their own thermostat with no shared ceiling, but I'm working with what I've got. So in the end, what I'm doing right now to bump up this temperature, ideal temperature is around 75 degrees for incubation. All right, no matter where these blocks go in the end, about 75, 72, 75 for incubation. It's the best, it will incubate the blocks the fastest. So I am now moved these blocks into my lab, uh, which is closed off. And uh, I put a space heater in here to warm the room uh, 72 to 75 degrees, which should get these blocks going. Now when I have to do a batch, obviously I'm gonna have to kind of roll them out just to make room and you know all of that. But, but while it's not in use, um, they're going to go in here, and I'm going to continue to do that, um, even in the summertime, again, because this room, uh, the temperature uh, can can remain somewhat constant, whatever I set it to. I should have did this before, um, but again, I like the closed off room for lab work. Um, so you do what you got to do, and that's just one you know reason to, again, keep your eye um, on everything at all times, kind of make sure you're looking. So it's not a you know, call it three week incubation, set it and forget it. No, you gotta check, you gotta look every day to make sure there's no bacteria in there, no mold growing in there, um, because sometimes it'll show up, you'll see some mold um, or some pink bacteria, or purplish bacteria, and then before you know it, if the mycelium, um, you know, mycelium can sometimes overcome that, but it's still inside the block, so you won't see it if you don't look for five or six days, whatever. So it's good just to check on them. But I'll try to do a follow-up on these bags. There's been no change um, in the bags that I just inoculated. Was it yesterday, the day before, whatever. Um, you can't see anything. You're probably not gonna start seeing anything till like at least day four, if not day five or six. So when I start to see something from those, I'll let you know. And then uh, around that same time, I'll do another check back with these older blocks to see if putting them in this, this heated room um, does better. I know that it will. Let's see if that's it. Oh, the last thing, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video, in terms of uh, how you incubate them, actually two things. One, you want to try to space, let me pull this, space them apart so that you, you have some room. These have a lot of room. My ones down below, they don't have quite as much. But you definitely want as much room in the front and the back so that they can ha actually breathe, especially once it gets to closer to that 72, 75, the bags actually should feel a little bit warm to the touch, but you don't want any hot spots. So right now they were freezing. I don't have to worry about that. They could be touching or whatever, but if they're at the right temperature, there can definitely be hot spots, which you don't want. It can kill off the mycelium. So have some air, you know, um, you know, have the ability to have some air exchange in between there. The more, the better. And last thing on these carts, <clears throat> ah! Okay, that really hurt. Don't do that, what I just said. Don't stick your finger and try to pull. It doesn't work, especially if the thing is going to pull. Um, this right here, God, what is that? I want to say that might be 18 inches. It's definitely not two feet. This is probably 18 inches deep. Um, if I were to do this again, I, I have some other, um, I have like two other ones. I have three carts like these, and they're all kind of different sizes. And I would definitely do the 24 inch, if not the 30 inch deep one. Uh, 30 inches might be a bit much. Yeah, the, the, there's a two foot one option if you're going on Amazon. Uh, I'll add that to my, my kit. Um, you can go to Amazon or Home Depot. I just order a lot of stuff from Amazon because I like to get it delivered. I don't have to go out of my house. But um, the bags will fit a lot more easier, obviously, with 24 inches. With these, I gotta like scatter them and I can only fit comfortably like four blocks uh, per shelf and then four on the back side. When I, when I squeeze it and do five blocks per shelf, I, I risk doing, you know, like having some hot spots because they, they do touch, you know, slightly in some spots. So, um, yeah, by the, by the 24 inch deep one, um, learn from me. So that is it. I will be back with another video checking up on these things. And, uh, the last video after that will of this series will be what to do, what I do once I get them into the incubation, I'm sorry, into the uh, fruiting rooms. So take care. I hope this was helpful. Like the video, 
um, if it was helpful and be sure to subscribe especially so you can see what happens next in this whole process thanks so much have a great one